Tone Talk. How's everybody doing today? This is Antonio Moore coming to you from Tone Talks. I've been following the news along with everybody else this Saturday about what's going on in Charlottesville, Virginia. Um, I wanted to come to you today to have a discussion that goes beyond the sensational way that the news is reporting it, whereby they're just looking at the violence and really look at why the violence is happening and the historical context for why the violence is happening. So, you know, you look at, look at the news and you see these white nationalists marching um, in protest of the taking down of a statue of General Lee, who was a general in the Army during the Civil War, and you wonder, like, why, what, what does that mean? What, what's going on? And I, I kind of wanted to come to you and kind of explain everything that, that I see. You know, it, it, you, you look at these images of white people going against white people and you start to see this dynamic of, of, of so much of the conundrum of what race left behind. You know, we think of this thing like, like slavery was just one of many struggles in America when actually it was, the, it's indelible that it was the institution that, that grounded this country. It's undeniable that this, this was the story of America for hundreds of years, during all of the formation years. And so, you know, the governor, as a result of the amount of violence in, in, in Charlottesville this morning, had to actually uh, declare a state of emergency. The police were called in. And what's, what's, a, what's interesting is to look at why this violence happened in a specific level and then in a more general level. Specifically, back in April, there was a, a, um, a decision to remove a General Lee statue from a park and rename that park as a result of, of some of the sensitivity movements that we've seen across the country to somehow kind of recognize that slavery was wrong without apologizing for it. So what you, what you, what you deal with is this reality that when you went and tried to, tried to act out that erasure, white America stood up with a fervor. The very base of people that, that supported Trump and led to Trump taking the uh, presidency are the very people that are marching today in mass and saying, no, this is our country and this is the history of it. Whether you want it to change or not, we want the monument up and leave it up or we'll fight you for it. And so, you know, General Lee as a figure is a very interesting person in, in and of himself because he was kind of repainted as this neutral figure as, in terms of slavery. All while he fought, all while his family owned slaves. I mean, they have a quote from him writing to his wife where he says, Slavery as an institution is a moral and political evil in any country. So he says this while his family owned slaves. And Frederick Douglass actually went as far as to say that they had repainted General Lee to, in, in, in this positive light when actually he wasn't a great person. And his family did horrible things to black people while, while they enslaved them. And so for me, what I, what I see is that what General Lee represents in so many ways is a conundrum that white America in general faces, whether liberal or conservative. To receive the benefits of whiteness, the inheritance, the white advantage, the white social networking, but at the same time want to uh, basically dismiss the history that created that whiteness and I, I think that as we look across at, at, at this at this whole incident this morning what was interesting to me was the visual of, of, of how many whites were on both sides of this battle and like you know one of the things that I read that's interesting about Charlottesville because of the changes in demographic it's, it's very liberal quote unquote and like you know to think of Virginia, or you know, Virginia's home of slavery and tobacco, as as now liberal is is is, is an insane thing to me in, in in some ways because when you look at one of some of the more recent stories, because much of this was about University of Virginia, which is located in Charlottesville, Virginia, and University of Virginia. I'm pulling up an article just recently acknowledged that it has a a heavy slave history. And I think for, for a lot of us, what we don't want to deal with is the gravity of what slavery was as an institution in this country. It was not just one of the many multicultural like disadvantages. It was the story of why this country had advantage. It is why this country was able to become a global power. To create cotton, tobacco without labor costs made this country a powerful engine 
And I think for for a lot of us, we don't know enough about slavery because we never asked. And we were never taught it correctly. We were taught that slavery was a southern institution. It was not a southern institution. It was an American institution. American slavery was an American institution that northerners and southerners benefited from. When you think about it, you think about it having, uh, having plantations in the south. And the north was where the abolitionists were. It just didn't happen that way. You have to understand that there were no ports in the south to go to England, to go to Europe. All of that product was shipped north and shipped out of the north, out of northern ports, with northern people getting benefits, northern whites. What you have to understand is that all of the clothes that slaves wore, all of it, was manufactured in the north. What you have to understand is that the banks that had loans against the plantations were in the north. This was the game, the entire ball game. And I think for a lot of us, what we try to do is relegate slavery not only to the past, which is borderline ignorant, which is insane in many ways, but we also try to relegate slavery into a corner of American history when it was and is American history, entirely almost. 400 years that date 100 years before the Revolutionary War. The first slave that came to uh, Virginia was in 1619. That's a hundred years before the revolution. Think about it. Then for another 250, 300 years, they had slavery. I want to share a section for you, uh, with you um, about the University of Virginia. I'm going to pull up the article and you can read along. The University of Virginia utilized the labor of enslaved African Americans from the earliest days of construction in 1817 until the end of the American Civil War. Most of the university's first enslaved laborers were rented from local landowners and worked alongside whites and free blacks in performing all the tasks associated with building what the school founders Thomas Jefferson called the Academia Village. In March of 1825, the first students arrived, and African Americans transitioned to working in the pavilions, hotels, and rotunda, maintaining classrooms, laboratories, and the library, ringing the bell, and serving daily needs of students and faculty. While faculty were allowed to bring personal slaves on grounds, as the university campus was called, students were not. A reflection, perhaps, of Jefferson's view that slavery raised the young in habits of tyranny. Tyranny. Slaves graded the terrace lawn, dubbed the dirt for the bricks, the gardens with their idyllic little paths, white benches, and shady nooks were once slave workyards tilled by laborers raising vegetables and fruits for the kitchen. The basement below some of the historic student rooms on the lawn were slave quarters. A slave cemetery now restored and dedicated had been forgotten under piles of mulch and maintenance equipment. Buried under maintenance equipment. You have to understand that them changing the name, because that's what Virginia was off, University of Virginia was offering to change the name of one of the buildings. No, give me my school. There's families that should get free education at that school. There's families that should own a piece of that school. There's families that should own a piece of this country. And I think for a lot of us, we don't understand what we're watching when we saw those protests this morning. We're not just watching people that are mad about a, about a monument. We're watching people that are mad about a movement. A movement that's saying that black lives matter. A movement that eventually will demand an apology for slavery. A movement that leads to lawsuits. Lawsuits like the one we saw from Byron Allen, but on a national level for African Americans. This is coming. The reality is like, what side of the fence are you going to be on? Are you going to be on the side of the fence that's in the past while you can't pay for your kids to go to school? Are you going to be on the side of the fence that says, give me my stuff? I'm on the give me my stuff side. What you see is Donald Trump is, it, you know, he came out with a, with a tepid like response today. You know, here's a guy that can be fiery when it comes to everything from Kim Jong-un to Hillary Clinton. But when it comes to white nationalists, he, he walks the line of saying just enough. Just enough to get by. 
But we're closely following the terrible events unfolding in Charlottesville, Virginia. We condemn in the strongest possible terms this egregious display of hatred, bigotry, and violence on many sides. On many sides. It's been going on for a long time in our country. Not Donald Trump, not Barack Obama. This has been going on for a long, long time. He did never, he never condemns the white nationalists. He never apologizes for American slavery. He never does a lot of things. Because this is the game. To wish it all away. While you, while you try to get these same people to vote for you under the guise of holding African Americans and other groups down. The reality of where we're at right now is we're at a break point. And I think what you're seeing is there's a fight for our country. And I'm just telling you, you better be ready to get into this fight. I'm not talking about violence right now, but I'm, I'm definitely talking about awareness. Becoming aware of the reality of where your family came from, what your family lost in the, in the whole reality of how this country was created, and how you can demand your due to make sure your children and your children's children have a chance going forward. This is Antonio Moore coming to you from Tone Talks. Please subscribe to this channel, share this video, and donate at tonetalks.org so we can keep the discussion going. Thank you.